In this video, we're going to talk about energy, and specifically we're going to talk about uh, the concept of conservation of energy, first of all. Conservation of energy means that we say energy is neither created nor destroyed, uh, it's simply transformed from one form of energy to another, right? So, what does that mean in practice? In practice, that means that energy is constantly being converted from potential energy into kinetic energy, and then vice versa, and back to potential, and back to kinetic, um, and et cetera, et cetera, right? And alongside that, what's also happening is we're also getting what's called thermal energy, right? Uh, and oftentimes, potential energy gets converted to kinetic energy, but there's some thermal energy also produced, right? This is typical in an inefficient reaction uh, or something where it's not quite fully efficient. Um, but there's always, but the point is that, that this plus this would always equal this, right? Never the case that we're going to lose energy, right? Energy always goes somewhere. Whether it goes into thermal energy, it goes somewhere, right? Um, and so on the MCAT, one of the things that we can do oftentimes is we can set values equal to each other, right? If we have a certain amount of potential energy, then we're going to have the same amount of energy transferred into kinetic energy, uh, assuming none is lost to thermal energy or something like that, right? Um, okay, so let, let me explain what I mean by that, right? Here are the equations the MCAT wants us to know as far as uh, potential and kinetic energy. All right, so first of all, we should know there are two equations for potential energy. The first one is Potential energy equals mgh, right? And I'll explain what these variables mean. Um, and then the other equation that we should know is potential energy equals one half kx squared. And then for kinetic energy, the equation that we should know is kinetic energy equals one half mv squared. Okay. So now, how do we do this in practice? What is what do these equations mean? Um, so let's say that we've got a ball, right? And the ball is on top of a hill, let's say. Right? So this ball, assuming this ball is stationary, right? This ball has, let me change colors now. This ball has, does it have potential or kinetic energy, right? Well, because it's stationary, the ball is not moving. We know that it doesn't have any kinetic energy. So all of its energy is in the form of potential energy. Potential energy of the ball is equal to the mass of the ball right, m, so this is this equation, right, mass of the ball times g, gravitational constant, and g is 10, so g, let me actually write this up here, so g equals 10, right, times g times the height of the ball, right, times how high it is relative to this point, right, so we see that the ball is up in the air. And so PE, potential energy, equals MGH, right? All of the energy that this ball possesses is in the form, purely in the form of potential energy, right? Um, okay, so then what happens? Let's say we give the ball a bit of a nudge, right? And the ball starts rolling down the hill. Uh, let me use a different color so that we... Let's say the ball starts rolling down the hill. And the ball ends up at the bottom of the hill, right? And so the ball is here. Let me let me actually do that in yellow so that it doesn't look like the ball just changed colors. That would be a little bit odd. All right, so now the ball is at the bottom of the hill, right? And so the ball now has no kinetic, no potential energy. Why does it have no potential energy? Well, because its height is zero, right? So potential energy equals, we say mgh, but h is zero, right? So because h is zero, that means the potential energy is zero. That means all of its energy has been converted into something else. This is assuming, of course, no friction or assuming no air resistance, right? And typically on the MCAT, we can safely assume no friction or no air resistance unless they explicitly tell us uh, that there is friction or air resistance. So potential energy is zero. All the energy has been converted into kinetic energy, right? And uh, the kin kinetic energy, of course, is equal to, what is kinetic energy? The one half m, that's the mass of the ball, times v squared, the velocity of the ball squared, right, or the velocity of the object squared. So this is the equation that we use for our kinetic energy, right? So now what is one of the applications of this? Well, one of the interesting applications of this is because the, of the law of conservation of energy, 
right? The energy is neither created nor destroyed. Assuming, again, we don't have any that gets converted into thermal energy um, or f because of friction, potential energy is going to be equal to kinetic energy, right? Poten potential energy here equals kinetic energy here. Here, right? That is to say all the energy got converted, right? All the energy, all the potential energy got converted into kinetic energy and all the kinetic energy came from potential energy. So if we do the math on it, uh, mathematically, we can express that as we could set these equal to each other. MGH is equal to one half MV squared, right? That's very useful. It's a very useful uh, way to conceptualize this, right? And of course, we can cancel out M because M appears on both sides of the equation. And uh, so now we're left with GH is equal to one half V squared. And so we could use this. Um, it would be quite useful for uh, mathematically speaking. Okay, so this is one of the, uh, the things, the operations that we can do as far as this goes. One last equation that we should be aware of um, is the one that I, I, I highlighted here, right? And that is... Uh, potential energy equals one half kx squared. Okay, so this is an equation about springs, right? And um, I don't think springs are very high yield for the MCAT, but it is useful to to be aware of this nonetheless, right? And so we've got a spring, let's say, right? And uh, let's put like a piston on the end of it, right? And so we've got this spring, and let's say the spring is compressed, right? Well, when the spring is compressed, obviously nothing is moving, right? There's nothing moving here, so all the energy is in the form of potential energy, right? So if we compress, if we were to push this spring back, right, and then release it, the ball goes flying, right? The ball goes moving. Um, where does that energy come from? Where does that energy of the ball come from? Well, it's it's stored as potential energy, right? So in this case, one half. K, K is the spring constant. K is the constant for a given spring. It's a, um, it's a value that we can only change by changing the, the properties of the spring, right? Either we, we change the material the spring is made of, or we somehow um, change the metal, uh, you know, rewire re, uh, the metal, so to speak. So it's a constant for a given spring um, with its given properties anyway. Uh, and then X squared, X is the distance, the distance that the, that the spring is compressed, so the displacement. So let's say the spring is normally... If at rest, the spring looks like this, but when we compress it, it looks like this, right? So this, in this case, this is the x value, right? The distance that we compressed it. So this is squared. Um, okay, and so we could do the same thing here, right? The ball starts out at rest uh, at it with a compressed spring, so that's potential energy. And when the ball starts moving, that's kinetic energy, right? So again, potential energy. Oops. So here, so let me write it down here. So we had potential energy over here, and we had kinetic energy over here, and these are equal to each other, right? And they're equal to each other. Uh, we could do one half k x squared is equal to what is it equal to? It's equal to one half m v squared, right? Notice that the properties are similar, right? Notice that k and m are fairly similar, uh, and x and v are fairly similar, right? Uh, they play the same role in the equation, and uh, that's just something that's kind of interesting. There are mathematical reasons for it, but as far as uh, it's beyond the sp scope of the MCAT, but it is uh, might help you remember it. And so these are the equations that we should be aware of, and in general, we should be aware of this con concept of conservation of energy. Um, we should be aware of the concept of potential versus kinetic energy, and we should be able to set them equal to each other, right? Especially when we talk about, for example, electricity, we do uh, we do have uh, equations for electric potential energy. Um, and those are, uh, we talk about those in the uh, electricity uh, videos, but just in general, be aware of the difference between kinetic and potential energy, be aware that they're equal to each other, um, uh, be aware that energy is converted between potential and kinetic energy, and in general, uh, unless there's air resistance or friction, um, potential energy gets converted into kinetic and vice versa. And uh, so this is what we should be aware of for the MCAT.